Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here for checking out the series. Uh, I do hope you hit that subscribe button. Uh, I put out three new interviews every single week. That's a new one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Makes it a great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover those new ones. You can do so anywhere in uh, in podcast land. Spotify, Apple Podcast, NPR, WFPK.org, Consequence, YouTube, right here for the video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast from, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith. Today, I get to talk with Daryl J. Johnson. Uh, you'll know Daryl from his uh, work in Punked back in the 2000s. In Drunk History back in the, uh, the 2010s, he was in Superhero Movie. He's back in Jake Johnson's new film called Self-Reliance. Uh, this is a movie that uh, Jake, you know, Jake from uh, uh, New Girl played uh, Nick Miller on there uh, and all of his great movies beyond that, Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, this is the first time that he's written, directed, and starred in a movie. It's the very first time he's ever directed, I, I believe, a, a movie, uh, that is. So we're going to be talking with Daryl about how he landed in this film, which really is one of my favorites that I've seen this year already. It tells a story of a guy who a uh, bit of a mundane existence until one day Andy Samberg, playing himself, shows up in a limo and offers him a chance to win a million dollars by playing a dark web game where all he has to do is stay alive and escape some assassins that are after him for uh, about 30 days. <laughs> so hilarity ensues. It's a very good script. Uh, Daryl plays the uh, the brother-in-law of Jake's character. So again, uh, want to hear what the, the whole experience was like. Uh, one of the really hilarious scenes in it involves uh, Jake and Daryl and a toilet. So we're going to get into that a little bit more as well. And um, and also we're going to hear about uh, some of Daryl's background. He comes from a very artistic family. So you're going to get uh, some of that info as well. So without further ado, let's do this and talk self-reliance out now on Hulu. It's Kyle Meredith with Daryl J. Johnson. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you doing, Kyle? I'm good. It's such a pleasure to meet you. It really is. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure to be here and uh, speak to you today. Yeah, man. So first off, uh, this movie, uh, Self-Reliance, uh, is so enjoyable. It really is, I will say, one of the most unique movies I've seen, one of the funniest movies I've seen. Uh, and, and, and you are definitely one of the highlights of that. <laughs> That's why I thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously, it is. Before I got into it though, I, so I just wanted to say real quick, I'm here, uh, I'm based in Louisville, Kentucky, and I, I was looking back through your Instagram and I saw you actually weren't far from here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, a few months back, but the Woodford, right? Yeah. I went to Woodford Reserve. Um, my cousin lives in Cincinnati, so I'm often close to the Kentucky border. Uh, but yeah, no, we went down to Woodford Reserve to get some bourbon and uh, have a tasting and it was great. Yeah. Yeah. That's right next to Louisville, right? It's not far from outside of it. A lot of the distilleries, you, you have to drive like 20 or 30 minutes outside of town, which is still you know, yeah. close enough. Yeah. I've never actually been to Woodford. Uh, I mean, that's that's like the 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 crown the crown jewels of all the bourbon, right? So, yeah, it is. I've it's never been best, to that one. one. Best. Yeah, it was great. It's really you got to definitely go if you like bourbon. You got to go. Yeah, I do. I have to get up there. It was nice to see you down there. Anyway, anyway, I get up to Cincinnati too. Yeah. All that aside, <laughs> I just want to say that before I forgot it. But seriously, how how did how does it, let's let's start with the beginning of the movie, right? So. So how do you get involved in this? I mean, is this this thing you're casting? Do you know Jake? I mean, where, how do you land in the uh, the brother-in-law situation? Sure, I had actually never met Jake before personally, uh, but we have we share a mutual friend, mm -hmm. and I believe they were like I think they may have been like watching uh, a drunk history or something. I think they saw something and he was like, "Oh, I like that guy. I want to work with him." And then my buddy was like, "Oh yeah, I know Daryl." And uh, next thing I know, my buddy was like, hey, you're about to get a phone call from my number you don't know. Just answer it. And I was like, oh, that seems very <laughs> suspicious. Uh, but I trusted this guy. I trust Eric Edelstein with my life. So uh, Eric was like, you're going to get a call. And I answered it. And he was like, hey, is this Daryl Johnson? And I said, yeah. And he goes, this is uh, Jake Johnson. And I was like, oh, my brother. Oh, nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely yeah coming from i mean does drunk history give you that kind of outgoing reputation like what 
what is the lasting impact of your history with that as far as any Hollywood reputation? Yeah, no, um, it's crazy because like I could be at an event and um, I'm like, oh, look at that celebrity over there. Oh, I want to say hi. And then they'll come over to me and go, I saw you on Drunk History. And I was like, you know who I am. It's great. I mean, the Drunk History family is already such so massive, like every celebrity in Hollywood wanted to do that show. And I can't believe it's not on the air anymore. It's a tragedy. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was such a great opportunity for me uh, to just show my personality. I mean, adding alcohol, it just basically takes away all the inhibitions. So I truly got to be me and say whatever I wanted to say. So we've gone from alcohol to alcohol in this conversation already. I know, right? <laughs> That's where it started, <laughs> where it ends, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you get on something like this, though, and, and it is unique. I mean, I've, um, I don't know if you go looking for parts or, or what, but when you land on a script like this, I mean, what's your first impressions of it? Because it's not like, it's not like every other script, I would imagine. Yeah. Uh, when I first read the script, I just thought it was really cool. It wasn't like a script that I had read before. And typically, sometimes when I get movie scripts, I'll read it and I'm like, oh, I'm so not interested. Let me just go to my parts real quick and see what I'm doing. And I'm like, nah. But this one, I read it from cover to cover, like the first time he sent it to me, I read it and I was like, oh, this is really good. Like, I, it's hard, like in this business, there's a lot of scripts going around and a lot of these scripts are just not great. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, as an actor, sometimes you're like, well, what, what can I do here? What, I don't know how, like, this is not a good script. What can I offer? But like, when I read his script, I just thought, man, this is really well done. And I just really wanted to be a part of it. So when he asked me, I was just like, yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you get it, um, you, you know, so so of course we have part of the story, which is this guy, Jake, and his character that's sort of trying to get his life together in some sort of way. And the other side, we have this incredibly ridiculous dark web game show that sort of raises the stakes on it. Yeah. Like when, when you read it, do you think about like, like when I when I was, you know, obviously the, the part, the personal part it sort of speaks for itself. It's it's the absurd part that's kind of fun to, to play around with, right? right. To kind of like when I, you know, like how far can you push reality TV? Like we've seen this in movies in the past a little bit, but I, I don't know what what's your, like what was your takeaway on on the bigger message of this parts? If that's if that's a fair question. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's basically like if there's really nothing happening in your life and you want to change, why not try something drastic and strange? I mean, this was like a very, like if somebody were to approach me and be like, hey, would you want to play this reality game show where you could get murdered, but if you win, you could, you could win a million dollars. And I'd be like, a million dollars in today's inflation? I need more than that. I just, a million dollars ain't worth it. Man, I feel like you can get a million dollars out of a bubblegum wrapper, uh, a surprise on a McDonald's box. So I'm like, I don't have to risk my life for it. But yeah, I mean, I just feel like sometimes people get into places in their life where they want to spice it up. And some of them take a lot of risks. And that is a risk. Um, couldn't say I would take it personally. But, but in the movie, why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, two two questions, two follow up questions. <laughs> First off, uh, what if it were Andy Samberg pulling up in a limo? There's a little bit of trust that goes into that, maybe. But like, still, we don't really know if Andy Samberg is not a secret serial killer. We just haven't figured it out yet. I mean, Andy Samberg is probably the, one of the funniest people on TV. But somebody would have been like, guess what? They just found out Andy Samberg killed 432 people. And I was like, what? I believe it. He's too <laughs> nice. <laughs> I believe it. Why wouldn't you be sure? You know, like, I just wouldn't be sure. I'm like, I don't know if I'll get into a limo. And didn't we learn from Team America World Police not to just get into random limos with strange dudes? <laughs> but you know, there's a good story that comes out of it regardless. It does. <laughs> All right. It's second question. Yeah. Um, if a million dollars isn't it, what's your number? What would they say? If they said a hundred million, they said a billion billion dollars i mean a billion dollars and then that would cross over into a threshold of now i have to become a trash person because i don't know too many billionaires that you're like i like that person <laughs> uh but a hundred million i could i definitely would consider it way more yeah i'm like 100 million yeah i would do it all right all right yeah, yeah. Now that even we got if that i had to, I even if i had to duct take a family member to me so we couldn't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> well the, you know the thing i do like about 
you know, especially coming out of the pandemic, and there there is that sense of loneliness in the movie that I feel like you know we're we're starting to see a lot yeah. in music and in film. And in Jake's writing as well, I mean, you know, in, in some of the other projects, that, that seems to be a theme in there. Knowing that he was a first-time director, this is the first time you guys are working together. Yeah. Uh, what was that relationship like? Because, and I'll, I'll say, when I look at him and or see anything that he's done, it always sounds like him. He always sounds like himself. Yeah. So the fact that he's not only directing, but also in front of the camera, like, is is that just... What is that experience? I want it to be funny. That's what I want. Yeah, no. Uh, well, it's definitely funny because, you know, uh, the first time I met him, he's just such a good person. Like, it's not often that you're like, oh, I get to meet somebody in Hollywood. Oh, I hope they don't have a reputation that I don't know about. And then you meet him and you're like, this dude is actually just really a legit, a good person. And then getting to meet him and his uh, his family, it was really cool. And so I felt really comfortable, felt really at ease. And, you know, I felt I'm, I'm the kind of actor that's kind of like a director's actor. I'm like, whatever you want, I got it. I'm not going to come in here and be like, well, I think... I mean, you know, I can offer up opinions and stuff, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, that's what you want. Let me give you what you want, you know? So uh, it was very free like that. He was very open to ideas and concepts and he was just very easy to work with. So I yeah. can't wait for the next project and he better ask me, Jake. Better ask <laughs> so when he says, listen, there's this scene that takes place on a toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He definitely told me about the scene uh, at first, but I think one of the good things about being on punked in your career is you've already gone through all the possible embarrassing hazing things you can do on camera. So I was like, oh, a toy scene? I did that. I ran down the street naked chasing Miley Cyrus. I, this That is nothing. So I feel like that show, and even like Ashton Kutcher at the time said at that time, he's like, you know, this show will prepare you for anything you have to do in Hollywood. And it did. And it did. It truly did. So it's playing itself out. It did. Like, I... I don't know if I how deep we can actually go on this scene here, but I really do want to like like what's the direction given in a moment like this? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean the the one direction that Jake constantly gave was just you know keep it real, keep it grounded. You know, it doesn't have to get ridiculous. Um, but you know, I just uh, I just I spend a lot of time on the toilet as it is. So as a, a life person, experience. It's life experience. I just do a lived experience. And that's, that's, it's a slice of life. That's what it was. I like when they say, you know, in acting, make sure you ground it to something true. And, and yeah. even in those moments, you said, no, this makes sense to me because I do this. Yes, exactly. You know, I, I, before he came in, I was like, oh. <clears throat> you know, sometimes you got to struggle. So you get into character and you do some phantom wipes just to get, you know, you get the action going and, you know, you're just ready for it. <laughs> you uh like how much background do you actually have in comedy I, I was trying to do a little bit of reading and i think i saw some notes like there's there's comedy in your family yeah right? my brother is a stand-up comic um everybody in my family is like kind of a creative we're not all like none of us are really like let's work for somebody else kind of people so we're all kind of creatives i have a sister who's a writer another brother who's a rapper you know so it's like everything is, is in the creative realm but like I've I've done time at UCB. I've taken classes at Groundlings. I've been around. I've done comedy. And plus, I was just naturally funny as a kid. And so sometimes you can build on that. Sometimes people are funny and then they're in, in front of the camera. They aren't funny. But for me, I'm lucky I was given the gift. It's a gift I must share with the world. You must share. Thank God that you're doing it. <laughs> How do right. you, you hear about those families that, you know, that 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 sort of have the creative bone? Is it is it competitive? Is it a bit of a competition to see if you can make the other? Is it easy to make your siblings laugh? I, you know, uh, for me, it's easy to make my siblings laugh. But there is no like competition within the family. I feel like um, we all have different aspects. Like my brother was a stand up, so I never really wanted to do stand up. I, that's why I went sketch and improv because I was like, oh, he's a stand up. I'll do my lane, and this is what I feel more comfortable with. And there's actually no competition with that because it's two different like genres of comedy. So, uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I don't think there's any competition. We're like the Wayans family who just hadn't gotten discovered. That's what we are. Which they were the Wayans family until they got discovered. You know, exactly. Exactly. The same thing, so yeah. yeah. 
So this movie is gonna help launch me and my family. How about that? That's it. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Seriously, uh, what you did in this movie, it really is some of my favorite parts in it. And and the fun thing about this, and I mean that I can say that about almost every single person yeah. in this movie, like everybody did such, you know, a great job and everything. So I really, I really sincerely appreciate that the work you did on there. Oh, thank you so much. I, I credit Jake for all that. Uh, he was a, he was very involved in the casting and everything, and it was great to work with Mary Hollandays again, uh, a friend of mine from UCB. Uh, so being able to work with her in the capacity that I got to play her husband, I got to text her husband and call him and tell him that she's my wife now. Uh, so that was really fun and very cool. And then Emily, everybody on set was great. Everyone that we got to work with, I mean, the team was great. And I do credit a lot of that to Jake. He did a really good job putting together this cast. Yeah, right on, man. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about it. Seriously, it's a, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.